Good morning, Year 5, and welcome to our shared reading video number three. Well, we've had a pretty intense kind of text this week, haven't we, where we've been learning to recognise the techniques that the author is using to position a reader and influence their point of view. We've been able to um, look at those techniques and we're pretty much identifying and evaluating them as we go. So let's keep on going with our text and let's finish it off today and have a look at these last few paragraphs on what they've done here. All right, here we go. Reacting to a bully with aggression is not the way to go. It is really important to model the calm and respectful behavior we want other people to do. So reacting to bullying by becoming aggressive yourself is not a great idea. Oh, look at that. Topic sentence. Straight away, talking about not reacting. And then it expands on that. But I really like, this is actually an imperative. It's actually a little bit of a call to action. It's telling you what not to do. So it's saying like reacting to a bully with aggression is not the way to go. So it's making sure that when you're responding, you're not responding the way that a bully um, would be responding um, as well. So that's really important. Um, you know, this... This imperative here as well, it is really important to model the calm and respectful behavior we want other people to do. So reacting to bullying by becoming aggressive yourself is not a great idea. So it's kind of repeating the first sentence, but like in a different way. So it's, you know, just adding to that topic sentence, reacting to a bully with aggression is not the way to go. This is what you need to do. So you need to be calm, you need to be respectful because reacting aggressively is not a great idea. So connecting those two ideas in this very short paragraph is really clever in what the author has done. Um, let's keep on going. So what can you do if you see someone being bullied? One, don't stand by and watch or encourage bullying. If you're feeling safe and you've got someone to back you up, step in and tell the bully to stop and that it's not okay. Two, don't harass, tease, or spread gossip about the bullying situation. This can sometimes make it worse. This includes on social media such as Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Three, support the person who is being bullied to ask for help. For example, go with them to get help or provide them with information about where help is available. If the bullying is happening online, help them block the person who is bullying them. And four, report the bullying to a parent or other adult you trust, such as a teacher or a school counsellor. All right, let's have a look. Here we go. Again, a rhetorical question. So many rhetorical questions um, in this speech, just really connecting with their audience. So what can you do if you see someone being bullied? That rhetorical question is also the topic sentence. I now know that this is gonna give me some information about what I can do. I really like how it's broken up into one, two, three, four. And I imagine if someone was actually standing there presenting this speech, they would be using those hand gestures. Like number one, don't stand by and watch or encourage a bully. Number two, having those hands up and really emphasizing those points. I do notice that these first two ones um, are things that you shouldn't do. So don't do it. Um, I can see that they're using those negative statements like don't stand by. Um, don't harass or tease or spread gossip. So things not to do. But then these two here are the more, um, the positive actions. Um, you know, what you should do. So I really like how they've got two things, don't do this, but making sure that they're connecting and making it positive as well and saying, well, but you can do this. And I think that's really important within that speech that they're doing there as well. Last sentence, here we go, bullying. Are you going to be part of the problem or part of the solution? It's up to you. Oh, what a powerful ending. Look at this use of an ellipsis. Getting me to pause. The, the topic we're talking about is bullying. So it's like that bullying. And then we get that, that call to action, that imperative. Using those personal pronouns, are you going to be part of the problem or part of the solution? It's up to you. So that exclamation, that statement, it's up to you, those personal pronouns. What I like best though, is that this, this conclusion connects straight up to there. So they've actually linked their, um, their heading or the beginning of their speech to the end of their speech. 
So they've given us all of that thinking in between, told us what bullying is, given us some facts about bullying, given us what we can do as bystanders, um, what we can do when we see a friend doing bullying, how we can react to bullying, what, what we do if someone is being bullied. But then at the part, it's kind of putting it back to you. So what are you going to do? Are you going to allow the bullying to happen or are you going to use all of these and are you going to help solve the problem? I love that. Connecting that back to the question is really, really important. So as you can see, this text is using so many techniques, so, so many techniques to position me as the reader. And it's also influencing my point of view. So that's so important when giving a spoken text because that's what your purpose is. Your purpose for a spoken text is to engage your audience, to entertain your audience, to inform your audience, to persuade your audience. Thinking about what you want to do and how you do that. You need to use these language techniques and these devices to be able to do that effectively. And I would evaluate <coughs> that this author has 100% effectively influenced my thinking and my opinion and my position on bullying. And they've done that by using all of those techniques and strategies.